All right then, gang. So now we've connected to the database and we can communicate with the database in this file using the DB variable. And we're going to use that now inside the get request handler function to find all the documents in the books collection. So to do that, I can just say now DB dot collection, which is a function. And this collection method is what we use to reference a specific collection in the database. And we just need to pass in whatever collection we need. In our case, that's called books. All right, so this is a bit different than what we did in the shell because we just said db.books in the shell, the collection name. But when we're using Node and JavaScript, we have to use a method on the db object called collection to specify what collection we want to connect to. And we pass that in then as a string, okay? So after that, we can just use the find method like before, and that's going to find all the documents in the books collection for us. Now, before we go any further with this, I just want to explain a little bit more about how the find method works when we're coding a real application. So before in the shell, when we used the find method, it seemed to automatically fetch all the documents and display them for us in the terminal. But actually, the find method doesn't return all the documents to us. The find method returns what's known as a cursor, which is an object that essentially points to a set of documents outlined by our query. So without any arguments inside this find method, it's going to point to the whole collection of documents. But if we add a filter as an argument, it's going to then point to a subset of documents based on that filter. And then this cursor object that we get returned from the find method exposes methods that we can use to then fetch the data which the cursor points to. Now, two of these methods that we can use are to array and for each. Now, to array fetches all of the documents that the cursor points to and it puts them into an array for us. For each, iterates the documents one at a time and then allows us to process each one individually. Now, when we fetch the documents from MongoDB using either of those two methods, it actually gets documents from the database in batches. That's because your collection could contain huge amounts of documents like 50,000 or even more. And if we fetched all of those documents in one go, it would increase the network bandwidth usage. So instead, MongoDB fetches the documents in smaller batches, the default batch size being, I think, 101 documents. So for example, if we use the find method to get the cursor, and then on that cursor, we use the for each method, it will fetch the first batch of documents. And the for each method then iterates that batch of documents so we can process each one. And after that batch is exhausted, it will then fetch the next batch and so forth. So remember, when we use the find method, it returns to us something called a cursor. And we then use methods on that cursor to get the documents and do something with them. Now, you might be thinking that we didn't have to use these cursor methods in the shell when we previously used the find method, and we didn't. And that's because the shell automatically iterated over the first 20 documents for us when we use the find methods. And it showed us those in the terminal. And then to see more documents in the shell, we could just use the command IT. And that would iterate some more. So the shell behavior is unique in this regard. And when we're actually coding an application, we work manually with the curse object instead. All right. So now we know a little bit more about this find method and the cursor that it returns and that we have to use one of these methods to get the documents. Let's carry on with this. So first of all, we don't want to pass in a filter because we want all the books. The next thing I want to do before I use one of those cursor methods is to use the sort method. And I can do this because this also returns a cursor for us. OK, now I want to sort by author. So let me do that. I'm going to say author and then one. So it's going to sort now alphabetically by the author name. Now, after that, we need to use one of those cursor methods. And what I'd like to do is use the for each method to iterate each book individually. So we fire a function for each book and we get access to that book each time around. And for each book, what I'd like to do is push it to an array that I'm going to create up here. So I'll create an array called books, which is an empty array to begin with. And then each time we iterate over a book, I want to add that book to the books array. OK, so I'm going to say books dot push and we're going to push on the individual book to this array. So by the time we've gone all through these books and we've done this function for each one of them, we should have an array of all of our books right here. OK, now this right here 
is asynchronous. It takes some time to do because remember, it's here that we're fetching batches of documents. And what we can do is tack on a then method at the end of this. And this is gonna fire a function when all of this stuff here is complete. So inside this function, what I want to do is then send a response to the user. And we can do that using the response object that we get access to right here. So we say response, we're gonna set a status code first of all, which is 200, meaning all okay. And then we'll send the JSON response. And the JSON we wanna send is just the books that we have right here, this array. So that turns it to a JSON string and sends it now back to the client, whoever is making the request. We can also tack on a catch method right here to catch any kind of error. So let's fire a function if we get that error and we'll return a different response to the user. This time we'll say status 500, meaning server error, and then we'll send back a JSON object and there's gonna be a property on that called error and the error is just gonna be could not fetch the documents. All right, and that's pretty much it. So now when a request comes in for this right here, we set up this books array, which is empty to begin with. We get a reference to the collection books and we find all of those books and we sort them by the author as well. This returns a cursor to us, remember, and on the cursor, we use a cursor method. One of those is the for each and that cycles through each book in batches and allows us to do something with each book. All we're doing for now is just pushing each book to this books array right here. So by the time this is finished, we have a full array of books. And then once this is all complete, we fire another function whereby we set the status code to 200 on the response and we send back some JSON, which is this books array right here. If there's an error, we set a status code of 500 on the response, which means a server error. And then the JSON we send back is this error right here. Okay. And we can get rid of this thing at the end right here. All right then, so let's save this now and try this out in a browser. All right, so now if you go to localhost port 3000 in a browser, then forward slash books, hopefully you're gonna get back all of that books JSON, which we do, we can see all of the JSON objects right here. Awesome. So that's how to fetch all of the books and how to use those cursor methods. In the next lesson, I'm gonna show you how to get a single book when we go to a URL like this, forward slash books, and then forward slash the ID of one of the books. So I'll show you that in the next lesson.